Hey yo, welcome to the QB School Show. I am JT O'Sullivan. We are locked and loaded, ready to go. Should be a good one. And if you're a fan of the channel, hopefully you subscribe. Hopefully you know about the course. Hopefully you know uh, Patreon. Hopefully you know Twitter. That's basically the only thing that I really do. So get over there, check those things out if you're not part of it. But I appreciate y'all being here and let's lock in here and see what kind of things we got going. What exactly is a tight reset? That's a good question. I, for a second, I had no idea. Uh, a tight reset, When I, I'm assuming you're talking about when I say a tight reset, I'm talking about at the back of a quarterback's drop. So see my hands here. So when you, if I'm right-handed and my back right foot hits the ground and here, as opposed to a big hitch where you're taking like a, a yard over two feet kind of hitching forward and really usually there's a heel click a tight reset is hitting that back foot and just barely shifting up just really quick reset with your feet as opposed to a big hitch you know oftentimes you'll hear people talk uh you know you got a hitch to the hitch to the number one two hitches to the number two three hitches to the number three you know if you call them r words you know one hitch to the first one whatever to the other one you know, it's just, I personally think a quick reset is better. Not only does it get the ball out of your hands faster, you have less moving parts, less things go wrong, a lot easier to stay balanced as opposed to taking a big crow hop, you know, like you're a right fielder, Mookie Betts in that thing, you know, to third base, just a lot easier to just kind of tight reset and be able to move in that in tight spaces, be able to move around in the pocket. You hear lots of quick pocket movement. That's from a lot of tight reset work. So that's how I talk about it. Uh, Last chance you, Cali style. Uh, I actually took a break from, I loved, not loved. I was fascinated with Last Chance You, season one. I think I watched like half of season two. Watched an episode of season three. That cat's just not for me. Didn't love watching that head coach operate. I think it was that season three. I get confused, but whoever the dude was from LA who, the, the gangster, and just not for me. But the, uh, the one from Laney, I was fascinated. It, to be honest with you, I was trying to think. I almost tweeted out, like, this is my favorite Last Chance You, but I couldn't really remember, you know, why I was so drawn to it originally. But I really do think it was my favorite Last Chance You in a long time, for sure. I enjoyed it. Not because the football was great or anything. It's fun as a California guy to see the California community colleges. I always cringe. I don't know. Do you y'all tell me in the in the chat, please? Do people call it junior college? I think it's borderline disrespectful. Like they're community colleges out here. That's what they are referred to in the, you know, in the sector. I don't, I would never call them a junior college, you know, to someone who works at a community college. Maybe that's just California. Maybe that's just the softy tree hugger in me, but like, you know, uh, community college ball out here is no joke. It's really good in Southern California. It's different than other places in the, and that's why I liked last chance you originally, because I didn't know that they even gave scholarships for community college or two year colleges. So it's fascinating to see that element of it in different States. But in California, man, people bust from far in, Bart, and as a Northern Cali, Cali guy, it was fun to see Bart, the struggle that some of these players go through. I mean, living in your car, having kids, you know, just life decisions, life, big life things that, and they're trying to play college ball. I mean, it's fascinating. It's, it's the power of, uh, you know, you see how hard it is. You see the power of football, what it, it's such a trampoline for so many of these people's lives to get an opportunity to go get a college degree that otherwise wouldn't. They're just struggling, you know, just like I'm so privileged on so many different levels with the family life and the, you know, the opportunity to succeed early that you just, you're not ignorant of it because you know, people don't also have that same privilege, but man, it's, it's inspiring to see so many of these people, so many of these young guys just do everything they possibly can to get it. But then at the same time, you see this veil of like, yeah, I'm a D1 guy, I'm a D1 guy and like, you know. It's tough to be a D1 guy. You know, I'm coming from a guy who wasn't a D1 guy. I thought I was a D1 guy too, but you know, you look back on it and you know, you're the guy that you get recruited as. That's just the truth of it. See, everybody does say Juco. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just, I think maybe just the football world calls it Juco. I honestly don't know. Uh, do me a favor, if you haven't already, while we're in here, boom, hit the like button. Smash it, crank this thing up. See, uh, it's been a minute for me, so I feel like I'm out of the loop with the old, uh, all my little gadgets that I used to have. 